This will sit up here. That one? Cool. Awesome. Thank you. I knew I brought you for a reason. Um, so, so good. So, who's happy to be in church? Who's glad when they said, let us go up to the temple that we may worship? Four of us. Okay. Well, hopefully by the end of this, there'll be more people that are glad that uh, you got a chance to come. But I haven't been, I've been in church the last two weekends, but um, before that, we haven't been in church for over eight, eight and a half months or something crazy like that. Haven't been able to meet at all, which has been uh, terrible for all of us, but I am glad, I am so glad that we are here and that we are in the house of God. Amen. Can I get a good amen? Amen. amen. Come on, somebody, because it is good that we're here. It is glad to be here. Who's desired to be in the house of God? It's the one thing I have desired, it's to be in the house of God. Yeah. And I know uh, from my church, Planet Shakers, that when it clicked over to 11.59, that we had 150 people in church that night. Uh, when they said they could come in, it was booked out in 37 seconds. And uh, now we're running something like, uh, is it 30 services across Sunday, across Melbourne, to get everybody in, because we've got 17,000 people that want to come in to the house of God, and it keeps getting booked out every second. So can you imagine trying to do 150 uh, people in service times to get that 17,000? It's very hard. Um, so they're doing as best as they can with 30 services. But um, we've been praying that coronavirus be eradicated, at least that every test that be taken, that there be no uh, positive readings. And I've been fasting and um, taking communion every single day in my backyard because that's as far as I've been allowed to go. And uh, been crying out to God that it be gone, that it be gone. And uh, we've been getting an answer to prayer. It's something like 30 plus days or something, is it now, that it's free? Uh, and there's nothing being recorded. So praise God. Keep praying. Keep believing. Keep interceding. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to tell you, I've got a message for you today, and it's called Revival Ready. Who wants to be Revival Ready? Who's ready to be Revival Ready? Anybody hungry to see the power of God move today and forever to see Warwick Nabil and the surrounding Wimmera area saved, healed, delivered, set free by the power of God. Come on somebody if you're excited, get excited this morning because I need to encourage you that you've got to have the desire. Amen. Amen. Let's have a look at this passage of scripture here in Exodus if you've got your Bibles, why don't you turn with me to Exodus 15, 22. It says, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went out into the wilderness of Shur. Not the singer Shur. Don't get confused there. It's not do you believe in love after love. It's the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara, which means bitter. So it's kind of obvious and it seems to make sense to call the place Mara, meaning bitter waters. So they went to Mara. What did they expect when they went to Mara and the waters were bitter? Anyway, Bible joke, church joke. Um, <laughs> what did they expect? It wasn't called sweet waters. It was called Mara, which means bitter. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statute and an ordinance for them. And there he tested them and said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in, the side, uh, in his sight, Give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of the diseases which I brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you or heals thee. If you read the King James, it's what I grew up uh, memorizing. So a lot of the scriptures that come out are still old uh, King James. But quite a revelation to come out of this passage of Scripture, quite unusual, to be honest, that they come upon this place, they find this place, they need a drink, the waters there are bitter, they taste terrible, you cannot drink it, but out of it, the revelation that comes later is 
Jehovah Rapha. It's the very first time that we hear this mentioned in Scripture. Jehovah Rapha. What does that mean? It means I am the God who healeth thee. I am the God who heals you. Jehovah Rapha. This is the revelation they get out of this, this point. I am your doctor. Basically, this is what it's translated in Hebrew. I am your physician. I am the one who heals you if there is ever a need in your physical bodies. I am the one who heals you. I am your doctor. It is completely translated physician. I am your healer. I am who needs this revelation today that I am Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals you. I tell you what, this world needs that revelation today. This world needs to have this revelation. Even the church needs to have a rebirth of this revelation that God is the one who heals you. Come on. God is the one who heals you. No one else. Nothing else. And um, it's quite interesting because writing this message and thinking about these times that we've been in, it's been a crazy year. We all know this. We've all been involved in it. Um, Melbourne's probably been hit the hardest, they said, out of all of the nations, all of the cities, all around the world. Melbourne's had the worst heaviest restrictions and lockdowns in the world. Um, quite incredible. Um, but before that, it was December 28 last year, and I think I actually mentioned it here when I was in, uh, when was I here? February last time. Um, but I mentioned this, me- this word that I got, and it was unusual to me because we didn't know anything at this time, but December 28 last year, we were watching Christmas movies as we always do, and we get to the bottom of the end of the, end of the barrel. It's it's still, it's still December, it's 28th, it's past Christmas, but the kids are still begging me for Christmas movies. I don't know about you and your family, if you have Netflix and they bring out a new Christmas movie and in November, we've already watched the, all the Christmas movies that there are to offer. When we get to December, it's actually Christmas, we have nothing left to watch. So I am at the bottom of the barrel. The kids are begging me, please, let's watch another Christmas movie. And I think, well, what can I watch? And so I put on an old classic, Gremlins. And I know what you're thinking, that's not a Christmas movie, but I'm sure there's a Christmas tree in there somewhere and lights get smashed or something. But we're watching this movie, Gremlins, and there's this word that this guy mentions, this character mentions in this movie. And he says metamorphosis. And I don't know if you've ever had this moment in God when God hits you out of somewhere left field that wasn't like, is not the obvious thing and everyone else just goes on with their life. But for you, it's like a punch in the face. That was for me, that word, metamorphosis. It hit me and God spoke to me out of it and said, this year is going to be a year of metamorphosis. 2020 is going to be a year of metamorphosis. The church is going to go in one way and come out another And I was like, I don't know what you mean, Lord. But anyway, I kept going around and sharing this word that there's going to be a fast tracking of growth. You're going to go in one way. You're going to come out the other. And I said, I don't know what metamorphosis even means. said, well, look up. uh, So I went to Google, of course. (laughs) Type in Dr. Google. And uh, don't ever look up Dr. Google for medical conditions, please. You're going to die. That's... (laughs) Open up your Bible. You shall not die. The Bible says you will live. Amen. I know which one I'm going to. Um, so I, I open it up and, and type in metamorphosis. The first thing that comes up is a monarch butterfly. Quite interesting because it says the monarch butterfly goes into a, 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 a chrysalis. It forms a chrysalis, goes into itself. Like, like, we just agree with this, that we're okay with this. Like, we just know what this means. Yeah, of course, it goes into itself and forms a chrysalis, right? And while it does this, it goes in one way, it goes into it as a caterpillar and comes out. 14 days later, I said, God, that's significant, that number, 14. Double portion, double blessing, quite interesting number. Goes in one way, comes out the other as a completely different creature, comes out a butterfly. The whole process takes 28 days in total. But it goes in one way, comes out another. God said, this is what's going to happen to the church this year in 2020. You're going to go in one way and you're going to come out transformed. If you look up in the Merriam-Webster's dictionary, it actually says, by supernatural means, 
This is how they can explain it. The world doesn't know how to explain this. What happens to a caterpillar? But it goes in one way, and by supernatural means, it transforms itself into a butterfly. Well, God says, this is what I'm going to do to the church this year. You're going to go in one way. You're going to come out another. And I don't know what it's looked for like for you, but for many people, it's looked terrible. And I want to encourage you today that so many of us have felt this way. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing in this season. I feel depressed. I feel anxious. I feel anxiety. I, I, I'm saddened by this. Can I tell you today, you're not going to die. You shall live, right? Some of you have felt like I'm going into the tomb. I'm being buried in the tomb. I want to tell you this morning that you're not going into the tomb. You're simply going into the cocoon. You're going to have a transformation. You're going to go in one way and you're going to come out another. Come on, somebody. Give him the glory. Come on. He is worthy. It's a time for transformation. It's a time to turn around. It's time to get revival ready. And every, every, every word that I've got out of every year, at the beginning of each year, has always been this one focus, revival. And I see it more than ever, in the, even in the midst of lockdown, even in the darkest days, they were calling it, I saw this great revival coming, the greatest revival that we've ever seen. With millions and millions of people, and I, I really believe it's starting in Victoria. I really believe that God has told me it's starting here in Victoria. So, people of Victoria, we must be revival ready. Get ready for the greatest harvest of souls that we've ever seen. We've ever seen. Come on, this next decade. I really believe over this next, even this next six years, God showed me a great revival but to 2030 get ready because there's a great harvest of souls a great harvest of souls is coming and we must be prepared amen, amen. revival starts when the people of God have a revelation of Jesus Christ you must have a revelation of who Christ is and who you are in Jesus Christ through the Word of God, have this understanding and this knowing that you are a child of God. Once you have a revelation, see, you've got to understand this, revelation always comes before revival. You can't have a revival without having a revelation. You can't experience the power. You can't experience the presence of God, the almighty power, the El Shaddai, God Almighty, His Power and glory demonstrated on such a magnitude to see a great harvest of souls without first having a revelation. Is everybody listening to me this morning? You must have a revelation before a revival. But I've studied revivals over time and for a revival to be sustained, for it to keep going, there must be a reformation. See, you've got to have some type of reformation. Some type of change must take place. See, moves of God come and moves of God go, but what keeps it there is a reformation. The people must change. I can't keep going on the way I was going on and expect God to show up all the time. That's why I sit in my backyard in sackcloth and, and, and have uh, communion daily every single day and call out to him because it must change. Something has got to change. If I don't change, if I don't have a reformation in me, something's got to change. I won't be able to sustain this revival. We've got to change collectively. We've got to pray more. We've got to seek God more. We've got to, come on somebody, we've got to cry out more. We've got to get on our knees and start to believe that He is alive. Have that revelation this morning that who you are in Jesus Christ. Start to stand up. Start to believe again. Come on, only believe. Only believe, amen? amen. There's a revival coming. It's time to get ready. It's time to get ready. Are you ready today? Well, there's a few, few things that, uh, a few thoughts that I want to talk about this morning after this, after revelation, revival, reformation. I would even say this to you, that the, 
Uh, that what I've worked out over time is that the hardest thing isn't the miracles. I've seen so many miracles, I've seen so many people healed and delivered and set free. The life of miracles is a life that's it's quite an easy life. It's the life of surrender, because that's the hard life. Are you prepared to be a living sacrifice today? Are you prepared to live that life of surrender? And I want to start here with this first thought is stay focused. Stay focused. If there's anything that will take you out this year, it's your focus. Where is your focus today? Where is your focus? Let me read this to you, Genesis 15. And I'll explain a little bit of the story around it, but it says out of verse 11. And when the vultures came down on the carcasses, listen to this. Abram drove them away. If you understand this whole, this whole passage here, it's when Abraham got the download from heaven. He got the call of God. He got the promise. The covenant was made between him and God in this moment. But it was pending on this moment in time. This very moment when he had laid out the carcasses. He would presented the sacrifice. He'd given everything that he had and he put it on the altar. But where was his focus? His focus had to be keen. It had to be on those vultures. Those vultures that would fly down and come upon that carcass and and take away that would belong to God. Are you getting this picture right now? And he says that he ran as soon as he saw them. He would run out and shoo away these vultures uh, lest they not take or steal away this gift, this sacrifice. This tithe, this offering, this covenant that he has prepared for God, he placed upon the altar. I love this picture because it's so much talking about right now in this season. Where is your focus? Where does your focus lie? I mean, if ever there was a a year that was distracting you, (laughs) it was this year. If there was ever a year where your focus was drawn to the news every single day, The premier being on there one day after another, after another. Your focus is taken. Your focus is taken. If your focus was ever, ever, it was there ever a time where where your whole life was was following the narrative of the media. Following this. One minute it's this. One minute it's that. Another thing comes up. We're listening. To, oh, this has happened here. Another thing's happened here. Another focus. Our focus drawn to all these points. If it's not Corona, it's BLM. If it's not BLM, it's the election. If it's not, it's Trump. It's, it's this. Our focus is constantly drawn to another direction. God's saying so much, so clear to us right now. Come on. It's time to shoo the vultures. It's time to drive them away. Are you hearing me, church? It's time to shift the focus back. Whatever happened to the narrative of the Gospels? Oh, it just went quiet, like awkwardly quiet then. Whatever happened to the narrative of Jesus Christ, the Great Commission? Go into all the world, preach the gospel. Ye must be born again. The narrative of the gospels of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I never change. That has never changed. Where does your focus lie today? I want to encourage you this morning. Don't get lost. Don't get caught up. Let your focus be on this one thing. Psalms 27 verse 4 clearly paints the picture. The one thing that I ask. The one thing. What is your ask today? What is the one thing that you've been desiring that I may seek, that I may desire? What is the one thing out of this whole year that you have been asking for? That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. 
Where's your focus today? Can I draw your focus back to the house of God, to the harvest of souls? Amen. First things first we need to do is revive the atmosphere. Revive the atmosphere. Who knows how powerful the atmosphere is? And that your words carry power. And when your words are released, it doesn't matter if they're positive or negative, they carry, the Bible says there's life and death in your tongue, that they carry power. So once it's released, it's released into the atmosphere. The atmosphere. It says here in verse 23, going back to our original text in Genesis, uh, um, sorry, in uh, where, Exodus 15. So I said Genesis 15, I got confused. 23. Now, when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name was called Marah, and the people complained against Moses, saying, what shall we drink? Isn't it funny? They always complain against the leader, against the pastor. Against... <laughs> Maybe I've got some pent-up issues here, but they, they... you're actually good listeners. I feel like I'm getting this off my chest right now. <laughs> This is good therapy for me. Um, feeling better about myself already. Uh, so they complained against him. Why have you brought us here? Why did you take us out of Egypt when you brought us to this place? And like, honestly, there was a problem. The waters were undrinkable. They couldn't drink the waters. They were bitter. So there was a problem and they complained. But what they released into the atmosphere is negativity. Unrest, Right? Have you ever, ever gone to a, a restaurant? I know it's probably a distant memory. <laughs> but if you can re rewind, think back. It's like when you tell a group of older people, remember when you were a kid, you know? It's like, remember when you went to a restaurant? Remember what that felt like? Have you ever seen someone that you recognize that you knew and you walk over to them like, hey, and all of a sudden the atmosphere changed? because they'd just been arguing over something and you just caught them in the middle and they stop. And, Hi. And you realize that you've just interrupted something. Right? Yeah? Anyone ever been in that situation or that long car trip to church? Now, we had a long one this morning. And, you know, in a long car trip, you know, atmospheres can change. Did you, you know, remember to wash the uniforms? No? Well, did you remember to mow the lawn? Did you? We can have these arguments. Have you ever met the people when they're coming into the car park and they just get out of the car and they're still kind of half fighting? It's awkward. It's messy. And you walk into that atmosphere and the atmosphere shifts. It changes. Am I talking to anybody? Give me a show of hands if you've ever walked in you've breached the atmosphere into that room you're the first guest to arrive you walk in hey and it's who died right whose dog got run over i don't know the atmosphere is is rotten in here oh we've just been talking about our our um bank account oh okay great i'll leave you to it it's so important that we be aware of our atmospheres. Have you ever wondered why church online isn't really church? It doesn't feel the same. Why? It's a different atmosphere. You walk into your house where you, play, you have your TV on, if you've got young kids, it's mainly Bluey is playing all the time or, or some other child's program, the ABC channel. Um, you know, it's, it's a variety of of atmospheres that are being spoken out, declared, talked about. So when you walk into your living area, your bedroom, if you're still on your phone, most people having a coffee, right? The atmosphere is different. There's no breakthrough in that atmosphere. No, there's not. There's sleepiness. There's rest, maybe. But the atmosphere, same as your car. Different voices. Same as our homes. Different news channels. Different things. It's the worst year ever. It's this. It's that. It's bad. Negativity being declared over your atmosphere. It's time to revive the atmosphere. 
It's time to revive the atmosphere. It's time to start to declare. Come on, can we declare right now in the name of Jesus? Would you stand to your feet and lift your hands right now and declare over this atmosphere in the name of Jesus that it is broken right now. Father, we open up the atmosphere. Come on, we speak into this atmosphere and we declare healing. Oh, come on, people. Come on, we declare a revival. We speak out right now over Warwick Nabil, over the Wimmera, over the state of Victoria. Revival in Jesus' name. Break the enemy's plans in Jesus' mighty name over the atmosphere. Come on, you may take your seats again. I just thought we needed an atmosphere break. <laughs> this could be interactive, this message. I, I'm feeling it. Mark 11, 22, one of my favorite passages of Scripture and so it's Jesus, have faith in God. He's saying, more assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast in the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things are true, that they will be done. He will have whatever he says. See, Jesus talks about you will have whatever you say. Then it goes on to say, and whatever you ask when you pray, believe that you've already received it and then you will have it. It's quite a, a bit of a mind game going on here because I was always taught, by one of my grandfathers that, you know, we'll believe it when we see it. Not when we think about it, not when we play it over in our minds. No, we'll believe it when we see it. Has anyone ever heard that saying before? Yeah. Jesus flips it on its head and says, no, you've got to believe it first. Right. Once you believe it first, then you will see it come to pass. You will have whatever you say. You will have whatever you declare. You will have whatever you speak out. Well, you just don't understand, Pastor, my spouse, she is just a handful. I tell you, you will have whatever you say. I don't know, Pastor, my kids, I just can't put up with them. One more day and I'm going to go mental. You will have whatever you say. This season... I can't handle it. Spring, I have the worst hay fever. Anyone has ever, what have you said? Yeah. Yeah. You will have whatever you say. You realize you carry power. Power of life and death is in the tongue. Yes. Amen. Amen. If it's fear based, if it's doubt based, switch it off. If it's negativity that's filling the atmosphere, shut it down. Fill your atmosphere with faith today. Amen. Come on, somebody. You've got to understand fear is just a, it's a spirit of fear. Fear is just false evidence appearing real. That's what fear is. We need to break that atmosphere of fear and break that, that power today. In Jesus' name. Um, second thought here is to revive prayer. We want to live a life of revival, get revival ready. We need to revive our prayer lives. It says in verse 25, so he cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a tree. Isn't this awesome? That the first thing, the first thing Moses does here is he cries out to the Lord. People are crying. They're, they're complaining. He didn't sit with them individually and go, have a coffee from the coffee cart and even though it's good and it's there and it's well placed there and we'll probably enjoy it later. But we didn't go down, we didn't sit down with the team and discuss what we're going to do about this, about this um, problem here that we have. No, he cried out, he inquired of the Lord. First things first, inquire of God. What is God saying? Well, I don't know what it was, but he, he, he found a... Maybe it was a crop of sugar cane. I'm not sure what he threw into that water to make it sweet. Maybe if you're a health fanatic with stevia, I'm not sure. But he threw so equal. I, I don't know if he had equal, but he threw something into there. It's funny that it's not always what you think it is, but God has the answer. God has the answer. Seek him. You know, my whole message has been redig the wells. That's been my whole uh, life's calling is to cry out to God to re dig the wells of prayer over Australia again. But I want to give you three quick reasons why I believe our prayers aren't answered. 
First reason is God's already done it. He already did it. It's already been promised, mandated, written in the Word of God. God has already done it, and you're asking Him to do it again. He's already done it. It's already been fulfilled in the Word of God. Second thing, Jesus told you to do it. You're asking for something He told you to go and do. Lay hands on the sick and they will recover. But you, Lord, can you please come down and and do it again? No, I've already done it. Now I've given you the Holy Spirit. You're to go and do it. You're the one. You're the one. See what I said before about that revelation of who you are in Jesus Christ. And I want to finish here on this third thought. Revive generosity. Revive generosity. Malachi 3.10 says, Bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Try me in this now, says the Lord of hosts. See if I will not throw open the very windows of heaven. The very windows of heaven. Not just one door, not just a little gate, not the back door, not the drain, the windows. All of the windows. I don't know how many there are in heaven, but I want them all open over me. Anyone else? Is that selfish? I don't know. But I rather the windows. I want the windows. Do you know what I've realized in my life living in the western suburbs? It's, quite, it's a lot warmer than where we used to live in Gippsland. It was freezing there. But it's a lot warmer over in the west. And we have this new thing called, we don't have these beautiful contraptions on the wall that you have here called air conditioners. No, we have evaporative cooling. And with evaporative cooling, you have to have all the windows open in the house, otherwise the house will explode. They didn't tell us that. But if you turn it on with the windows shut, it starts whistling. You think the end of the world's here, right? It's about to blow. Quick, crack a window, somebody, right? And the thing opens up, all the air flies out with everything else, but flies come in. Because, yeah, anyway, different. I've got lots of problems, obviously. I'm venting a lot today. But the thing is, during summer and during the warmer months, I had the windows open. And the first thing I noticed while the windows are open is I can hear crickets. I can hear lots of crickets. Then I can hear fireworks going off. I know that doesn't probably happen out in your neighborhood. Maybe it does. Maybe you can hear, I don't know, 12 gauge shotguns going off. I'm not sure. But hear someone doing a burnout. Obviously, not your area either. But uh, I thought to myself, gee, it's a lot easier to hear when the windows are open. Gee, you can hear clearly. It's not that you can't. It's that you can hear clearly. You can hear so clearly. You can hear the minutest of details when the windows are open. I want to say to you today that giving has never been a pocket issue, a wallet issue, a bank account issue. It's always been a heart problem. It's always been a heart issue. Where is your heart today? Are the windows open? over your heart? Are they open over your life? Over your household? Over your family? Come on, it's time to revive generosity, people. It's time to revive. Listen to this, Acts 10, 31, and and said, Cornelius, your prayers have been heard and your arms are remembered in the sight of God. This is about prayer and giving hand in hand. There's something about it that's caught God's attention saying, I've heard you, I can hear you. And lastly, but not leastly, if I can have maybe the keys or band or something, maybe keys, it says here, verse 26, and said, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in His sight, give ear to His commandments, keep His statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. I'm the Lord who heals you. It's God who protects you. It's God who heals you. It's God who covers you. It's quite interesting, even if you go back to Egypt, 
and the Hebrew people, the Jewish people were sectioned off in this quarters called Goshen, that they lived in this place that was unscathed by all of these problems that hit Egypt. There's one of them that's my favorite. It says that darkness fell upon Egypt. That's not my favorite part. Darkness fell on Egypt. It says it was so dark that you could feel it. Oh, wow. I think we had a few months or weeks like that in Melbourne. It was so dark you could feel the presence of darkness. Except for, it says, in the home of the Israelites. There was light in their houses. Oh, I don't think you heard me right this morning. It says in Goshen, when the Israelites stu stood inside. Can you imagine this picture right now that the lights came on? Where did they come from? Well, Thomas Edison hadn't yet been born and uh, there was no electricity. There was no light bulb or globe or, or copper contraption. They walked in and the light came on. They walked in and there was light in their homes. Come on, is there light in your house today? Is there light in your homes today? Come on, how about you take that light and wherever you go, there is light where you go. Is there light in Coles? Is there light in the IGA? Is there light in the fuel station? Come on, is there light where you go? When you walk in, does that presence of darkness lift? You walk in and there's light now. Oh, we love it when when you come around, Elder, what was your name again? Elder Les, the joy of the Lord comes in, the light comes on. Oh, we just love it when you walk into the room. Come on, is there light? Is there light that follows you, that goes with you? He said, don't fear, don't fear. You're my people. You're my people. Second Chronicles, I love this, Second Chronicles, it's double already double portion already chapter 7 God's blessed number favorite number verse 14 double portion can we get any better if my people who are his people we are his people called by his name would humble themselves you know what humble themselves means it means pray seek his face fast they used to tear their clothes put on sackcloth and ashes humble themselves and pray and seek my face turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven. It's the first thing he'll do. I'll hear you. The windows are open. Come on, somebody. And I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Three things that we need right now over Victoria, over this area, over this state, over this nation, over our globe in Jesus' name. Hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land in Jesus' name. Do not fear. I will bring none of those things upon you as I did upon the Egyptians. Fear not, for I am the God who heals thee. I am the God who heals thee. Come on. I think so, something about today, we need to come out of agreement with fear. Some of us are let fear in, let doubt in. I have to do this quite regularly, stand in my backyard and say, Lord, I... I came into agreement with that fear. I come out of agreement with fear today. And I step back into agreement with love because that is the opposite of fear. Not faith comes a bit later, but love. Love. Why? Because perfect love casts out all fear. Not perfect faith. Perfect love. My faith is on a journey most of the time. It's His love that's always perfect. It's always there, His mercies. Come on, somebody. It's there. It's available for you and I. Why don't we stand on our feet right now? There's a few prayers we need to pray. We're going to pray for this couple. Is that right? Is that, you want me to do that over the, okay. Well, we're going to pray right now. Maybe you've come into agreement with fear today. Come into agreement with doubt. I want you to vocalize this. I want you to declare it. It's time to change the atmosphere over your life, over your house. Maybe you spoke it in your house a lot. Fear, I hope this thing doesn't get us or I hope we're going to get through this. I hope our bank account is going to make it. It's time to speak life today. It's time to rebuke that fear, that spirit of fear.
Say, no, my bank account is going to be overflowing. Press down, shaking again, running over. I'm going to be so blessed. I'm going to bless others. Father, right now, why don't you lift your hands today if it's fears maybe been robbing you. Doubt. Will we ever open again? Will the church ever be filled again? Forgive us, Lord. Right now, speak this out right now. I come out of agreement with fear. I come out of agreement with doubt. I come out of agreement with anxieties. I come out of agreement with worry. I come out of agreement with sadness. And right now, I step into agreement with your love, with your perfect love. Right now in the name of Jesus. There it is. Just release love, his love, his mercies. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed right now. And we loose it today in Jesus' name. Overflowing love. There's an anointing here right now. I can feel his presence overflowing. Just receive it today. It's his love. It's his mercy. It's His grace. You are able. You are more than able. He's broadening your shoulders right now. Come on, cast your cares for He cares. He never asked you to care, but I care. I care so much. It's time to be careless and cast those cares upon Him. The only one that's full of care is Jesus Christ. He's the one that's careful. Give him all the worry, all the doubt this morning. I sense his presence, power to heal, to deliver, set free right now. Right now. And if you're here and you want prayer for whatever it is today, I'd, I'll ask that the altar be open. I'm not sure if that's what you're... That's how you're doing. But if you want to come down and get prayer for healing today, I, I would invite you to come right now. And as we're doing this, I want to pray for these people that are um, having trouble in hospital. And Father, right now, if they're listening, if they're watching, they know who they are. And Lord, right now we speak your miraculous power in Jesus' mighty name. Come and touch them right now, Lord. Let your healing power come. Let it be smooth. Let it be easy. Father, we speak life right now in Jesus' name into that hospital room. We speak life and we declare the life of Jesus Christ right now. Flood the room, fill the room in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Who's believing for a revival?